The evidence you are now about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please say, so help me God. So help me God. <clears throat> you may be seated. On the day of the 14th of July, when you were in Alice Springs, were you and Pete getting on? We were getting on fine. You see, we have witnesses who say they saw you in a restaurant and you were arguing. I object. If there are witnesses, then let's have their names. Sustained. So there was no problem with the relationship? <clears throat> no problem at all. You left Sydney at the beginning of June, is that right? Yes. Can you remember which route you took? Um, you'd have to show me a map. When you were in Alice Springs after the alleged attack, did you have a secret email account? Who is Steph, Miss Lees? I don't know. Is not Steph a false name for someone you were writing emails to named Nick? I object to this line of questioning. Who is Nick? A friend. A friend with whom you had a sexual relationship. This is not relevant to the case. The witness has painted a picture of a harmonious relationship with Peter Falconio. This is not necessarily the case, and I should be entitled to explore it. You can continue. Did you have a sexual relationship with Nick Riley while you were in Sydney? No. Really? Joanne Bean has confessed she did have another lover while in Australia. I made a fool out of Pete in front of all those people. We're going to get you on a flight out tonight, Joanne. You said you'd fend him off. Well, at least it's out of the way now. He can't pull the same trick in the trial. I have stood up there being ripped to shreds while he, that man, is sitting there watching. And you go on about giving him a fair go. We're doing our best. What about me? What about giving me a fair go? Look, you said no... You were meant to be looking after me. You said no one believed you. I do. I have no doubt that that man in the dock is a cold-blooded killer. We have to look forward now to the trial. No. You have to look forward to the trial. I don't have to do anything. confused about him and Pete. Pete was the best person. I didn't deserve him. People have affairs, Joanne. Bloody Nick Riley. You look back and it means nothing. Do you know what the worst thing is? I'll never be able to make it up to Pete. I'll never be able to say I'm sorry. Can the accused and counsel please stand? 
I rule that there is sufficient evidence for Mr. Murdoch to stand trial. Mr. Algy has given us a little preview of the kind of defense he's going to run. He's going to cut and paste pieces of this case, and he's going to tell the jury that they make a comprehensible whole. Well, we're going to put every piece of evidence in front of the jury, and after they've heard our evidence, we're going to trust that they come to a proper and a rightful conclusion. Now, Tony, I want more forensics. And Anne, check out that vehicle. I want to know what part of Joanne's story we can substantiate and what part we can't. And I want every witness involved in this case called in. We can call as many witnesses as we like, but without Joanne, we haven't got a case. Is she coming back? I don't know. Rex Wild here, Joanne. I'm ringing to keep you informed of what's going on out here. You might not want to talk to us, but I think it's important you know what's happening. We've discovered that forensics did take a swab from the gear stick of yours and Peter's combi. The result was too late a call, so they didn't admit it as evidence. We've been doing some research, and there's someone over in the UK, in your neck of the woods, actually, in Yorkshire. Well, he has a method of testing which reads very low DNA results. We're hoping to persuade him to get on board. Joanne, I really need to talk to you. If you're there, will you pick up? No-one can come to the phone at the moment, but please leave a message. Me again. From Darwin, Rex Wilde reports. I'm becoming very intimate with your answer phone, Joanne. And another interesting thing has come up about our friend, Mr Murdoch. We found out that he was carrying your hairband on his person as some kind of token. What's this about my hairband? Joanne, hello. That's good, you're there. You remember when Murdoch was arrested, the police went through his possessions and they found a hairband that was like yours. Well, um, they've gone back through the evidence and, um, look, Anne's here. She knows how to do this better than me. She can tell you all about it. Hi, Joanne. It's great to talk to you. The police seem to have found a hairband resembling yours attached to Murdoch's gun holster. So it takes on symbolic importance. Killers often do that keep something that belonged to their victim. How's it going over there? We're thinking about you. Okay, um... I lost my job at the travel agents. Just people kept staring at me. I've got a new job, working with vulnerable adults. I like it. I know all about vulnerable. We're looking forward to seeing you next month at the trial. Ring me with any more news. She didn't say she wasn't coming, so we go ahead presuming that she will be here. Dr Whitaker? Yes. Tony. I'll Thanks. Do. Thanks for coming. All right. We tested them, but any DNA samples found on them were way too low for us to call. And uh, presumably they've been handled by a great many people. I'm afraid so. Has anyone pulled these apart? The loops, you mean? Mm. No. This tape, the back of it will be sticky. Could have collected sweat, pieces of skin from the person who made the handcuffs. Can you test for that? Absolutely. What if I said to you, we've had another look at the cuffs and it's Murdoch's DNA on them? Oh, for Christ's sake. Hello, Joanne, it's Rex. Ah, uh, I guess you've heard the news. Well, the review of this new evidence, it will cause a delay in the trial. Yes, I have. I have heard the news. Do you know what it's like, this waiting? It's unbearable. I've had to move again because of the press. You've got to hang in there. What for? To be stood up in front of that lawyer and humiliated. To have the papers write more crap about me. Look, I'll get the Nick question out of the way in my opening address. Have it over and done with. 
I'm not coming back for the trial. Joanne, you have to. We can't do this without you. Look, I know a number of people have let you down. I did too, during the, the committals, but... Look, you know, we're on your side. you just got to meet us halfway. I can't do it. Joanne, look, you've got more balls than the rest of us put together. You got away from that bastard in the first place. Who do you want to be with you at the trial? I mean, we'll pay for someone to come out to support you. There's only one person that I want. We're doing this for him. Joanne, our case is three times stronger now with this new evidence. Look, you know, please, Joanne, just one more push. We're almost there. On the first day of the trial of Bradley Murdoch, Peter Falconia's parents and brother Paul accompany Joanne Lees into the Darwin Charged court. with Peter Falconia's murder for the first time since July 2001, wearing a long sleeve white shirt, black skirt, and a hair tied back. Do I look okay? <laughs> <laughs> you look terrific. <laughs> There's a couple of things we need to talk through. The vehicle. We've been through every possibility and... ..there's no way there could be a gap between the seats. So... Why do I remember it like that? You did receive a severe hit to the head. The mind can play tricks. Will you at least think about that? I also think you should show the jury how you got your hands from behind you to in front. Show them. Hmm. Tie you up. Let them see how you escaped. No, not in front of that man. All right. But will you really try to tell the jury your story? Any time you can show emotion, especially about Pete. <clears throat> I thought that... <clears throat> ..that I was going to die. I... Uh, <clears throat> I was terrified that... That he was going to rape me. And then I asked him if he'd shot Pete, and he didn't reply. And, and that's when I thought that he might have. <clears throat> that he might have killed Pete. What were your future plans with Pete? Can you tell us about those? Okay. <clears throat> we were going to be in Fiji for our birthdays. We were talking about it, about She can't do it. She can't open up. She did well. You should have pushed her more. The jury didn't warm to her, and if they don't like her, they're not going to convict him. See you tomorrow.
He's too late, Mac. Lay off him. Oh, coming from you. We're in court now. We're a team. We play as a team. Even if we lose? Even if we lose. When you spoke to the police, you believed the man pushed you from the cabin into the rear. Why has your recollection changed? <clears throat> well, at, at the time, I did believe I had been pushed from the front to the back. It was only afterwards that I began to doubt myself. Really? So you deny that you told the police artist you moved your hands to the front of you in the man's vehicle? I don't remember saying that. You say you moved your hands from the back to the front of you in the bush. Yes. So I'll show you if you like. How close does he get to you in the bush? I don't know. I was, um... I was in the bush. I was frightened. I suggest that we break at this point. The jury are excused. I have some matters that need to be discussed. Mr. Algy, Miss Lees has offered to demonstrate how she can move her hands from behind her back to her front. You have not picked her up on this offer. I believe you must do so. I hear what you say, but I don't I'm believe glad you. you hear what I say. If she offers a key piece of evidence for her story to the jury, you must take her up on it. If you don't do so in your cross-examination tomorrow, I shall personally order it. Done in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Looks like your ballet dancer niece got that one wrong. Yeah, well, she's had four years to get it right. Fifty bucks. I found a substantial DNA profile on the handcuffs used to tie up Miss Lee's. Did the profile match Mr. Murdoch's? It did. It was 100 million to one, that was the defendant. In Darwin, a British forensic expert has given new yeah, DNA the evidence... ...were driving along an outback Northern Territory highway when a man in a four-wheel drive urged them to pull over. Put a canvas on Bradley Murdoch's truck in June 01. Rodney Adams was in a road train heading yes, south... Yes, um, Joanne Lees and Peter Falconia did stop at Ailey on. I retraced my steps a second time. I took photographs of the bitumen. So you say you saw Peter Falconio a week after his disappearance? Well, if it wasn't him, it was his twin. He bought a drink and a chocolate bar. Contradicted evidence from Joanne Lee. What the hell were you doing? Why did you call that woman? If I didn't, the defence would have. She was honest, but misguided. Any jury could see that. Well, I hope you're right. We have to trust the jury, Joanne. All the evidence in front of the statements to this point, and it's understood that the prosecutor has around 300 pieces of evidence to present. What's he trying to do? Bore them into submission. Oh, Rex is always like this. He knows precise information led. Well, it's not going to win him this one. The witness may step down. Thank you. Are you calling any more witnesses, Mr. Wilde? That concludes the prosecution's case, Your Honour. Are you calling witnesses for the defence, Mr. Algy? I am, Your Honour. Call Brad Murdoch. Yay! Hand it over. Do you wish to take the oath in the Bible or an affirmation? Take the oath. 
Please take this Bible in your right hand. On the 14th of July, 2001, did you go to Barrow Creek? No, I didn't. Did you have anything at all to do with the alleged disappearance of Mr Falconio? No, I did not. I have no further questions. Mr Wilde? Where did you hide the body, Mr Merle? Objection. Merle? Objection sustained. You killed Peter Falconio. Objection. No, I didn't. Objection sustained. You assaulted Joanna Lee. No, I did not. You kept this hairband as a souvenir of the night's events. No, I did not. Why didn't you talk about the police finding my hairband on his gun holster? The judge ruled it as inadmissible evidence. Everything is stacked in his favour. Everything. You might think that the first piece of evidence is the vehicle at Barrow Creek, which you might think, on the evidence given by Miss Lees, had front-to-rear access. You see, we have a problem here. Miss Lees is not sure whether it did happen like that or it didn't. Is it good enough that you're called to deliberate on a man for murder to accept the shifting sands of the description of the man's vehicle. You might also think that the DNA evidence doesn't stack up. We have heard experts in this court challenge Dr Whittaker's method of low DNA testing, a method which not even the FBI recognise or use for fear of inaccurate results. Remember Lindy Chamberlain. Three years in prison, because of a haemoglobin test carried out by the Northern Territory Police, which proved to be fatally incorrect. Guilty members of the jury carries a degree of absolute certainty. A verdict of not guilty could simply mean, well, we know something happened at Barrow Creek that night, but we're not sure what it was. Try as we have, we've got a doubt. I've got a doubt. And as a juror, I am obliged to give the benefit of that doubt to the accused. So I find him not guilty. <coughs> uh, we'll reconvene in 20 minutes. Thank you. You wondered where you'd got to. It's not going well, is it? You told the jury the truth. You can't do more than that. These are solid Northern Territory people. They didn't come here to watch a soap opera. They came here to be jurors on a murder trial. And they can smell Algie's pomade from a mile off. Trust me, I'm not going to let this bastard walk away. There are suggestions from the defence. But Joanne Lee's story doesn't add up. In some ways, it doesn't. That is because she can only tell us what she knows. She can't tell us that she saw Peter's body. Of course, she didn't. She was fighting for her life. You have to remember that the police took over 300 pages of interviews from Joanne. There were bound to be differences. But against the odds, she did well. She did very well. Look at this identikit again. Look at the face, not the hair. We accept the hair is wrong. 
Four years later, look at the man in the dock. Looks like him. Of course, it is him. We don't have a motive. But we don't need a motive. We know that Bradley Murdoch was there. Bradley Murdoch's DNA was on Joanne Lee's T-shirt. It was inside the combi van, and it was down deep inside the cuffs that bound her. This evidence links Bradley Murdoch to the victim of the crime, to the scene of the crime, and to the instruments of the crime. Along with Joanne Lee's identification of Bradley Murdoch, this DNA evidence is utterly compelling. Peter Falconio died of a gunshot from a handgun fired by Bradley Murdoch. His body will be found one day. The jury will retire to consider their verdict. The jury have got a question for the judge. The jury would like to know, Your Honour, if we can convict for murder in the absence of a body. If they don't know that, they can't have understood anything. Christ. Are we in trouble here? <laughs> 